Hi, hi. My name is Nicole Glenn, and I am the host of LLC today. I actually have a co-host on with me, Christy Knitchell. And what we're trying to do with LLC is to introduce listeners to inspiring women who are making a real difference in logistics and supply chain. And with the LLC podcast, you'll hear inspirational stories, both both personal and professional challenges our guests have overcame, how their backgrounds help shape who they are today, and how they empower others and give back to the communities and often the world. So I already said her name, but I'm going to say it again. We have Christy Knitchell back on the show, who is normally an actual host of this show. So Christy, thank you for joining me today. We're going to dive in. We got a really cool topic, um, and I want to throw this out first and foremost. Christy just won a fantastic award. Uh, it's the Ernest & Young Entrepreneur of the Year for 2022 for the East region. I'm going to share a picture real quick of this because you got to see this. This is amazing to see Christy collecting this award, being on a stage. She talked a little bit about being speechless. So we're going to get to hear more of her story. But Christy, I want to start back because I know a lot of people know you from our network, but I think it'd be great for you to just give us some insight on you and, and your background. Absolutely. Thank you for having me today. Awesome stuff. Um, so yeah, you know, Christy Knischel, owner of Knischel Logistics, as Nicole mentioned, um, started in the industry 25 years ago, which is kind of hard to believe, uh, working for my father, just working my way up through the company. And, and honestly, I think us talking about this award today kind of resonates with my journey, getting the opportunity to work for my father, not having the college education or say experience or background in what I'm doing, but just working hard and doing everything that I could within the company to learn everything and work my way through um, every division within our company, every role within our company to get to where I'm at today to finally winning this award, which is extremely um, humbling, empowering. Yeah, sure, yeah. I, yeah, I don't <laughs> even know how to explain it. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I want you to talk about what this award is and give us a little bit of background on what it is. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, ENY has done this for a very long time. Um, they do this in the United States, Canada. I mean, it's a world global award that they give away. So if you win within your region, um, in my region, I know there was four states, over a thousand applications, um, 30 finalists are picked. I was one of the only, well, I was the only woman finalist within my group. Um, and out of those 30 finalists, there's nine winners. Um, but you go through, you know, a process that's definitely a grueling process of your financials, um, your background, all the different things you've done, whether it's challenges you've overcome, financials, how have you held up there? What are you doing in the community? What are you doing for your people that work for you? So it touches on a lot of different areas within an organization and you know what are you doing to help all aspects and you know how did you get there what did you have to overcome to get there and um it was definitely very um humbling to see when i was a finalist and being the only woman to be quite honest i kind of felt like was there not enough women applying or you know it was just interesting to me so it almost made me compelled to want to want it even more but then also feeling like I wasn't good enough still to win the award. So it was definitely um, interesting, but. Um, and when you, know, you shared that with me, you'd showed me when it was just the whole like finalist spot. No, even before that, I think it was all the nominees. Cause I remember seeing this yes. giant screen of like mail, 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 mail. It was yes. like, you were that one like word search find like, okay, oh, there's the female in, in, in the group there. So it was, I think I even called it out to you and was like, holy cow. Right, right. Yeah, yeah no, it's one of one. It's yes, yes. Yeah. And honestly, you know, I talked to Nicole a little bit too about just the fact that, you know, this award, it recognizes entrepreneurs that are out there that are going through every trial and tribulation they can to be successful, yeah. all the challenges, um, you know, and really making a difference within your company, within, you know, the world, um, community, whatever it might be. So it's definitely an, an important, um, I think, award for me to win. Because again, I shared with Nicole, even 
actually being at the event, going back to the only woman, right? They had all of us life-size standing up around the room. And most people didn't even realize I was the only woman winner. And then after I did win, then you have all these women that are, you know, like, oh my God, we were rooting for you. I felt like everyone's like it was the loudest in the room because they were so happy to see a woman win. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was, uh, it was definitely a moment that I wasn't expecting, but wish, you know, I was hoping I was going to win, but I wasn't prepared for <laughs> to say the least. Well, I, I wanted to ask you too, because I know, you know, starting my journey in 2017, and I always say it, and if anyone's ever watched or listened to any of our shows, I always just give you such kudos because you've mentored me tremendously to this day. I mean, you, I constantly reach out to you and go, hey, um, but that importance of putting yourself out there, right? And that importance of kind of telling the world your story you know, so why why do you think it's for important for other women to kind of see that, take that, embrace that and and do that to kind of replicate this concept to get out there? Yeah, I mean, so to rewind for a minute, you know, putting yourself out there was something a lot of people know about me that know me that I didn't want to put myself out there. I didn't want to speak in front of people. I'm kind of shy, to be quite honest. Um, I've learned to come out of my shell quite a bit. But I also felt like being in the industry I was in and struggling with it being male dominated when I was at a young age was very challenging. So having the opportunity to speak and pushing myself to do that and putting myself out there truly let everyone know that I'm here and I'm here to stay and I'm going to be there beside you working with you. And it's not a bad thing. And because I almost felt like it was a bad thing like a long time ago. But because of that, we've been able to grow the business tremendously and also grow within myself, um, you know, and putting my brand out there, which is me, and then the company behind me, obviously, and what we stand for. And I think it's important because it just teaches you to push yourself. I had to push myself when I didn't want to push myself. I wanted to give up at one point because it was so hard. And then having to tell myself, like, just keep dealing with it. it. It'll get better. You know, there's a bigger picture 20 years from now and 20 years from now, here I am um, on a totally different level um, that I didn't think I could accomplish. And I think people feel like they can't accomplish things because they need this or they need that. At the end of the day, if you work hard and you put your heart and soul in it, you can accomplish anything. I feel um, building my network, putting myself out there, I think has been probably one of the most important things that I have done for this business, because I have such a network now of people by putting myself out there that I can reach out to anyone or hook other people up with other people. Um, or like you said, me mentoring you, you also mentor me in other ways. We talk shop now about different, how do you do this? How do you do that? And it, to me, that's, what's important. We're not going to all be successful if we can't help each other is how I feel. Um, so I think any young woman out there that is feeling that they can't succeed or they can't get to a certain level and maybe we're all at different levels, maybe there's a level you don't want to get to and you're fine with, and that's okay too. But put yourself out there, be heard, you have a voice. I was told by someone recently, um, you know, specifically that I do have a story to tell and people want to hear that. And I think they can tell when you're not that person that wants to be standing up there talking and talking about yourself and what you've done, because I think for women, it's hard to say that you've done all of this. And this is just because of you when we all have great teams behind us, because I wouldn't be here without my team, obviously, but I also wouldn't be here without a lot of decisions I made too. Sure. And that's the ego side of it that, you know, us women, I think talk about that. We don't want to talk about, <laughs> Um, sort of speak. So, you know, again, I just, I think it's so important because I've seen what it's done for me. Um, mm -hmm. Something I didn't want to do, I pushed myself to do. And I think even more because um, I talk about this a lot and my father's no longer here, God bless him. But I just felt like I constantly had to prove to him I could do it, even though he picked me for the job. And that's what drove me even further to just push and push to prove that like, I didn't have to have that college education. I didn't have to have all these years experience and I could still figure it out, work hard and do it and be successful. Oh, for sure. 
So when you're saying all of this, like my brain's going, you know, because I, I understand and can relate to that. I think about the concept of the ego side, the pride side. And I think it's very challenging internally because even with compliments, I mean, isn't it hard when you get a compliment? People are like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. You've done this, this. And to yourself, you just did what you would do, you know, like, cause you're, you're an overachiever in, nor in life, right? Yeah. And so with that, I think it's easy for people. I know I do the same thing too, to like go, yeah, I really did do that. Awesome. And give yourself almost credit. Right. So do you do anything to like focus on like the wins? Do you ever take any, any, any time to like kind of reflect on that and let it absorb a little bit and do a little rah, rah over it? Yeah. I will tell you this particular win, um, I had a song that resonates with me and I listen to it over and over again. And it kind of gives me the chills because it's one of those songs that has words in it that like you feel that it's like hard and you went through this road where you're traveling and you're not with your family and you're putting all this effort in there. And then people are like pulling you in all these directions and you're like, is this worth it? And now like getting up there, getting that award, I feel like it's worth it. Like I did it like, oh my God, people recognize that like I'm successful, even though I was successful without it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but you are right. Like it, it's hard because it is like a pride thing too, because I realize you know, I have so many different strengths and then the other strengths say that I don't have or my weaknesses, my COO has, and we make a good team, but then you're always in your head, like, well, it's not just me that God is here, it's all of us. But, you know, they, when you win this award, when you go for this award, they expect you to have an ego. They want you to talk about what you did, not what everyone else did. What did you do to get you here to this point? And it's hard for a woman. Yeah. Uh, one of my closest friends five years ago, she was looking for a new job. And so she didn't have a resume written. And she's like, well, I just work in accounting. So I don't know, really know like what type of job I would ever get. And so I sat down with her because, again, this pride thing of the things that we do, she was diminishing her value by just I'm in accounting. I cut checks. Right. And so we sat down and we went. I asked her so many questions. And I like watched her mannerisms totally change as I kept pointing some of these questions out. Well, you need to balance this and you need to do this. You need to have these types of listening skills. And so I, and she started realizing that she had all of this, these skills and had done all of these great things and her resume filled up. It went from, I have no idea. I'm in accounting. I cut checks to this document where I was like, we got to shave some of this off. Like, it's great. <laughs> they don't want two pages. And I think it's really hard. And I, I, know, I hate to say it, it's just women, because I'm sure there are men that go through that as well, that kind of get lost in their own brains on really identifying what value they bring. But going through that exercise was so impactful to her. She now works at my company. Um, and she's grown significantly. It was an, I didn't make her do a resume so I could hire her. It was by chance. Uh, right. But just going through that exercise and finding your own self-worth, because I think it's just natural to, to I don't even want to say diminish it. I think it's. Just not yeah. recognize it. Maybe. Right. right. And so that's why I asked. I'm like, you got to have right. those moments of celebratory. When I worked for someone else, he was like, are you so excited? It would be a contract or something. Right. I'm like, yeah, I'm so glad we got it. Okay. Now what? So I don't know. Is that an entrepreneurial trait? Do you think that's an entrepreneurial trait where we're just like, okay, and next? Yeah, I kind of feel that way. I mean, obviously when I talk to my husband and my friends or close friends, sometimes to me, I feel like, especially my husband, it's like, you probably get sick of hearing it because I feel like he's the one person maybe I can gloat to, but in the same token, too, I think it that is how it is. It's like you get excited and then you got to move on. And um, and that's what I do. This award I have not moved on from yet. <laughs> I will it. Even on the way here, I was listening to that song over and over and I'm over like, again. Hey, look, look, we'll share this again. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so exciting. And, and awards like this, you know, that's what I was asking you because you've actually helped me identify some awards that would be a good fit for me. So 
I started some of my application processes. What it's been like two years now from, yeah. from you giving me that guidance. And so with that, it's it's just understanding where to go and and finding an award like this. This is a big deal. This isn't just like, hey, like and share me. This is this is a this is a monumentous yes. uh, win for you. So I, that's why I wanted to have you on this show because I'm like, we got to talk about this and we got to talk about how how you took those steps in your journey from opening up because it isn't even about entrepreneurs. So. Ladies, if you are, or gentlemen who listen, if you're not an entrepreneur and that's not your path, that's okay. There's still a great lesson here, which is you have to be vulnerable. Yes. And so, I mean, can you talk on that, Christy, too, on how you have to do that with something like this? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, being vulnerable is always going to be a part of wanting to grow, whether you're in an organization or not, growing up within an organization, but also putting yourself out there and, um, you know, again, just being heard. It's it's extremely hard, but I also feel like this um, empowerment of talking about how difficult it is, right? Like when I would talk on stage a long time ago about growing up in a family business and I would have a line of people waiting to talk to me and like, oh, I have the same situation. I have the same situation. Like, then you don't realize, you know, how many other people are going through the same thing you are. So talking about it also builds like that community around you too. And then you can help other people and help each other kind of get through it. How did you get your dad out of the business? Or how did you deal with this situation between your brother and sister? Um, you know, and I remember my dad used to tell me like, don't say too much or don't talk you know, bad about situations, but I also felt like I wanted to be real about what I was going through mm -hmm. because I don't want to be fake about it or pretend that it's great being in a family business because it was hard. I think one of the things I said on stage was it was the most, um, it, it was like the best time of my life, but also the worst time of my life. Yep. Um, working for my dad and going through the whole situation. Um, and the hard part was not giving up. And I think that was something for myself to prove, not just for my dad, but for myself, that I could actually do it without, you know, everyone saying, oh, you need an education to do this and that. Does it help? Absolutely. Not knocking it at all. But I don't think I thought I could accomplish what I did. And I think it just goes to show that if you put in the time and the effort and you push yourself into areas that are uncomfortable and make yourself uncomfortable, which I think you talk about a lot, it's a good thing. Because it makes you think and it challenges you. I agree. I agree with all that. So what other advice do you have for people in regards to this concept of, I know we keep touching on that, putting yourself out there, but how do they find some of these opportunities? Maybe it's not even an award. It could be, you know, understanding more of how to get involved in their community or how to create some of those milestones that are worthy for an award like this. Right. Absolutely. I think the biggest thing is, you know, first of all, if you can't do it yourself, but I have um, a director of marketing that helps research and look for local awards within our area um, or a woman owned business. So also looking out there searching for women owned awards in general, um, whether it's like size of the company or an industry thing. If you have an uh, industry that you're in, looking within the industry and conferences of what maybe awards or things that are out there. As far as like charity goes, my charity side is more about what my vision and values and what I'm trying to do, which is like mentoring women, helping women. So we partner with Dress for Success, which helps women in the workforce. Um, Chatham's um, Entrepreneurship for Women. Um, you know, I speak at some of their coffee hours that they have, and they have a lot of events helping women getting into business. So there's a lot of different things that have to involve women, children, things that align with my vision with the company. And that's kind of how it ties it all together. Because at the end of the day, if you're aligning your charity work with something that's totally different than what your vision is and what you're trying to do as a leader, um, you know, it might not mesh so well, but it's definitely something that I think people know this is what I'm here to, you know, to do. I feel like I'm here put on this earth, to be quite honest, to help other people um, learn from my mistakes and how I can help them get to where they want to be. So, you know, I think 
in the community too. Another big one that I'm um, part of is it used to be called the Heinz Ward Positive Athlete. Um, Heinz Ward was a Pittsburgh Steeler. He was always known for no matter what happened to him, he got up with a smile on his face. <laughs> so again, you know, being positive, having, um, you know, these young students out there knowing that you don't have to be the best and have the best grades, but doing the right thing and being there and being a positive role model for other people. Um, so that's another big reason why I'm part of that charity as well, which is huge to me. So, you know, doing all those different things is truly important to getting yourself out there and finding, you know, building your resume, so to speak, to winning awards like this, you know, and, and going through the challenges that you go through within your business and what have you done to get yourself to the next level. I want to say even with you, Nicole, um, you know, when you had an award recently too, it, like I literally asked you, like, what all did you accomplish? And when you sent me that email, I was sitting there thinking, you probably didn't even realize that until you wrote it down. No, I didn't. Because in my mind, it's like, well, we started two divisions. We did this, we did that. But it's a heck of a lot of stuff that happened. It is. Yes. And, yeah. you know, and the best thing you can do, though, is start then making a list, right? What have you done? How many people have you had? What offices? What awards are you applying for? Um, again, going out and searching for these awards. Um, there's a lot of different ones that are out there and ones for other people within your organization, too. And not forgetting those people in different roles as well um, is all part of that. So, and, and again, building that list, that resume, um, be willing to talk on panels and putting yourself, probably one of the most important is putting yourself on a board of companies at some point. I sit on three boards right now. Um, one of those boards is very active, but it's also something that helps get my name out there, get the company name out there. And again, you're giving back to other people, other businesses right. in return, you know, with what your advice is and being part of that. Um, so there's different reasons why I sit on different boards as well. So for example, I sit on a local college board because we're helping with curriculum with students that we could potentially hire mm -hmm. that are in our industry. Another one is the bank. <laughs> to me, that was an awesome board to be able to sit on and be advised because that's who we do business with. And then of course, um, a transportation intermediaries association, which is within our industry, um, is another company or a conference, um, you know, that we are a big part of in, in this industry. So it's important, I think, to be a voice on there because again, all those things build up your resume to say, these are the things that you have done um, to help other people, yeah. your company, yourself get to a certain level. And for, again, I know we, we live in this entrepreneurial life. So when, when the audience listens to us, there are other things too, besides, the entrepreneurial side of it. You can also be on a committee that runs one of these associations. And what that's going to do is just expose you to the concept of really what goes on to, to house these associations and these events that are thrown and building your network and creating lasting relationships. So again, it's just like you can start somewhere. It's just putting yourself out there. I mean, that, that should be the name of the show. Yeah. Mitchell and putting herself out there. No, you're right. And honestly, with the one board that I sit on, it was started with a committee sitting on the committee. Then they asked me to chair the committee. Then they asked me to be on the board mm -hmm. and they're all stepping stones to the next level. And sometimes I think, you know, these are things I don't want to do or I don't have time to do. But then you make the time to do it because honestly, I've learned so much. I've met so many other great leaders, um, not just owners of companies, but just people that are in great places that if you need advice from someone that's done something before that you haven't done, and I'm talking like people from billion dollar companies that are willing to talk to you that you didn't think would be, you know? So again, it's helped build out that network of people that I can just kind of go to and like hook people up anywhere. And if someone needs help and I sit back and look and think like, wow, like how did I do all of this? But at the end of the day, it's like, but this is what everyone should be doing. <laughs> right. And you like start peeling back the layers like, well, I met this person that did this. And then that inspired me to talk to this person. And you see this giant web of all of the things that 
you walked into or made happen. And then it all leads to something that if you ever want to blow your mind, just sit there and think of maybe even how you got your job today and go as far back as you can. And you're like, holy cow, there's so many moving parts. Right. To get that done. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely, um, it's been a long, crazy road. It's been fun. It's been a lot of tears, um, a lot of craziness, but I don't think I would change it um, ever. Um, it's definitely, I felt like it's made me the most strongest person I could ever be. And um, I still have work to do. And that's going to be something that I continue to work on. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I just, I'm thrilled that I've been able to get to where I'm at today. And I was lucky that I had the opportunity for my father to even have, you know, the opportunity to get to where I'm at today. Um, it's just overwhelming. Well, Christy, congratulations on this award. And Thank I just you. want to ask too, if you can throw out too, I know you probably get some media inquiries. I mean, if anyone's looking to get in contact with you, how would, how would they reach out to you for mentorship or media inquiries for this award? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can reach out through um, LinkedIn. Um, we have our page. Um, can certainly send something through there. Obviously, I have my page on LinkedIn as well. Um, or our website through there. You can reach me through there as well, KanishaLogistics.com. Um, certainly willing to, you know, talk to anyone. And, you know, I'm currently mentoring many other people right now as we speak too. I have a lunch tomorrow with someone else, um, our friend Raquel. So she's here in Butler and met with her a couple of times and it's, it's very rewarding to be able to give back. So, yeah, well, they're lucky to have you all of them. Me well, too. So thank you <laughs> for everything you do for us. So again, I have to just show it cause I'm just so proud of you, Christy. Congratulations. <laughs> and we'll see you again on another LLC show. Wow. If I could talk another LLC show. Thank you.